Evening, folks. Welcome to The View and our Academy View stream, our second Academy View stream. We did one this time probably last year with Jerry as well. I'm delighted to be joined by Jerry McDermott as well. Jerry, how are you doing, mate? How's things? It's a pleasure being back, uh, Ger, and thanks for inviting me. And it's always a, it's always a good feeling uh, chatting up with you. Good, good, yeah. Anytime we get a chance to talk about Leeds, especially the future of Leeds. Yeah, especially always, about Leeds, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people in chat. I will try and get to as many people in the chat as we can, uh, but I do want to try and make sure we, we 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 cover as much topic stuff as we can. Any questions you've got for myself or for Jerry, stick them in the chat. I will start them and keep them till the end. At the end, we'll do a little Q&A wrap up at the end. Uh, for questions that we can answer, we're not going to be able to answer everything, but we'll answer what we, what we can. Um, first things first, Jerry, just your thoughts from a first team perspective on the job Daniel Fark is doing and, the, and the, the way the first team have, have uh, gone about their business so far this season? Well, first and foremost, you have to be very, very impressed by it. I mean, he's breaking all sorts of records um, and we're playing good football. Um, we're getting results. Uh, even when teams come to Ellen Road and sit back and play this low block, as they call it now, um, we find a way to win. And uh, at the end of the day, we you look at the score lines, you look at the points total, and um, you have to be honest about it. We are on par for automatic promotion now. It's in our own hands. Um, I looked even at the four players we have playing with Wales and how good they're on the ball. And that's at international level. So player for player, we have the best players in the in the championship, in my opinion. Uh, so it's really, it's down maybe to their mentality. It's down to uh, just being composed and... Um, and um, and just getting over the line. But I just go back, just a little bit of a similarity to 2020, Jordan Kovic, when we had that break and uh, we had to come back and finish off the job. So basically, we're, we need to just finish off the job now. I think we're capable. The only thing I will say, and I don't know if you know, this, Ger, uh, mm. are all our goals come from our front four, whether it's the starting four or those coming in off the bench. We have, we're getting nothing in terms of goals returns from um, the midfield and uh, or the back four. So that's just one little thing. And set plays is another. We don't get many set plays. And another one, uh, Ger, and I just like your thoughts on this. We don't get many penalties. The amount of no, times no. Uh, after a game we're talking about, we should have had a penalty there. Yeah. I mean, you go back to um, last Sunday, and um, that challenge on Joe Roden, I mean, it was more an assault than a challenge. I mean, if a player comes in like that in the box, you tell players nowadays to be very careful when they go to ground uh, or even when they make contact with a striker nowadays. Uh, but mm. then to jump in on top of a player and how the referee didn't give a penalty there, I, I don't know. And, um, and uh, so, but... On a positive note, we're in a great position, playing good football, winning games, and accumulating the points. What more can we ask for? We just need to finish the job now. Yeah, that's a big point. It's, we've got eight games left. It's important to make sure we finish the job. And it, it is. It's in our own hands. We do our job. It looks after itself, and we get automatic promotion as well. Yeah. I, the penalty thing, I completely agree with you. I think it's... The last time I looked at the numbers on it, I think Leeds had that 13 penalties that were ruled out against Leeds that should have gone the other direction, according to, you know, Dermot Gallagher does his Monday morning. Yeah. This is what I think of the decision. He said he, he just, he can't see any reason why it was in the penalty. He said there was two reasons. One, the challenge on um, Rodon was a nailed on penalty. And secondly, he said the player plays the ball with his hand straight afterwards. That's the correct, yeah. There was a second one, yeah. Yeah, so he said there's two incidents there where a penalty should have given. Referee's view wasn't obstructed, had a clear view of it, didn't give it. But it's been, a, it's it's kind of like Leeds of doing this in spite of the EFL. Like we're getting there, even though it's not gone our way. We haven't always got the decisions. We've got a couple that have gone our way, and that, that should be said. But in general, the decisions haven't all gone our way, and some big ones have gone against us. And they still managed to dig in. The big change for me is the second half of the season versus the first half is the ability to grind out wins when we're playing yeah. against the low block or we're not having a great day at the office and still managing to get the job done where early in the season it wasn't so easy and we were struggling to get over the line against certain clubs but they've definitely grown over the year you can see it the, the players believe in Farka's system you can see that and Farka very much believes in this the core group of players that he uses regularly so it's been great but we've got um, 
We've got some exciting young talent and a young man by the name of Archie Gray, uh, who scored again for England today. His debut for the under 21 side just keeps just going. It's accolade after accolade. It's starts off the season as a promising up and coming central midfielder. Jerry ends up being the number one right back in the club for the entire season. Deputizes in midfield, gives a Chelsea 200 million pound midfield a run around in an FA Cup clash. Gets a, gets name checked by the England manager in regards to the first team at England. Gets his first England on 21 call up and scores on his debut. And the lad has just turned 18 years of age. It's been an incredible season for Archie. Yeah, well, in relation to Archie, um, as you probably are aware, um, uh, we had Archie and his group over in Galway at the Galway Cup um, about five years ago when he was 12. Um, and uh, I remember um, looking at him then, and uh, he was a confident little lad, but very respectful. And uh, he would... Um, you know, we took him out for a meal uh, on the last day and he, he came up and as you've seen, um, we engaged and he chatted away and he had a lot of things to say about Eddie. And uh, being being so young, I was uh, taken aback by it. Usually 12-year-olds don't come out and talk about Eddie Gray in the way he was talking about him. But I will say one thing, and I always believe footballers... The best footballers have a good knowledge of the game. It's like anything, you go into any job. If you know what you're doing and you have a knowledge of what you're doing, you'll do a good job. And Archie just seems to be in the right place at the right time. But um, just something in relation to Archie and Harry, his younger brother, and uh, a couple of more of the young players coming through. Um, I don't know, are your viewers aware, but they all started in futsal. You mentioned Michael Scubala. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Michael Scobala, uh, his uh, football history is, is futsal. And uh, one of the things about futsal is the movements. Players don't just, like you look at Archie when he's playing a right back, he's not just up and down the line. He comes inside. Sometimes you actually see him in a midfield role. You forget he's, he's actually the right back. Sometimes he even goes over to the left-hand side. So it's all about his movements, uh, patterns of play, Things like that. So I don't know. Uh, do, do your viewers see it? But I can see the futsal in them. And as you know, the thing about futsal, you get very good with a ball at your feet. Um, you know, it's like a, a tradesman. When he gets comfortable, whether it's a hammer, a screwdriver or whatever, you do it without even thinking. And Archie does things spontaneously. Uh, his movement, he gets forward, he gets into the penalty area. I mean, he's, he's only turned 18. Um, if he keeps progressing and developing and learning the game as he will, I mean, what's he going to achieve in the game? It's scary. You know, once he starts getting into the box and getting strikes and goal and getting goals like he did today mm -hmm. with the English under-21 side, I mean, we have a player there that could surpass even... Um, what his granddad did and his granddad uh, played in two European Cup finals you know that's Frank by the way yeah yeah and um, the I put the image up just again real quick for people because um it's actually hard to pick him out in this because he's so young there's Archie right there um yeah there's Archie yeah uh, he was a tall young lad then right? maybe I was a little bit small <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say they were standing on boxes, Jerry. You're all, yeah, you're right. yeah he's, um, he's wearing, he, Archie's wearing high heels. <laughs> no. <yeah. laughs> Sorry, Archie, if you're listening to this podcast at some stage. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I say that shirt will be worth a few quid in a few years' time, Jerry. I hope it's locked away somewhere safe in Galway and, and kept safe. Hmm. Um, what you said about Archie is interesting because you mentioned futsal, and, and we did talk to Michael Scubala earlier this season. He had a, a futsal background. And I remember when he got the Leeds job temporarily, there was some discord online about the fact that why would we give him the job to somebody with a futsal background? What does that have got to do with real football? And anyone who studied the game and knows futsal, futsal's origins are in South America. It's, it, it comes yeah, from being able to yeah, yeah. keep the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Keep the ball on the deck. We get comfortable with it. And as you said, as a tradesman becomes familiar with their tools, football becomes part of your, nearly a connected part of your body. It becomes a reflex that, that you can just do without even thinking about it. And futsal is a fantastic learning. More and more countries are adopting futsal at a very young age for kids to give them a really good grounding and ground-based football. You look at the rule changes around football coming in at underage 
last couple of years and into that will change again the next few years around reduced amount of time allowed to head the ball because of obviously the issues that that the heading the ball has with, with dementia and, and problems later on in life. Yeah. So becoming co- more comfortable with the ball is hugely important. You look at what Michael Scabala did with the underage 21s and what a great job he did there. Absolutely. I was just going to say that he's doing an absolutely cracking job at Lincoln there as well. Nine games unbeaten right, right off the playoffs now after taking them over and they hadn't won in nine games. So, I mean, he's he's proven that he has an ability to to, to take the things he learned from foot, futsal, apply it to other sports as well, and then bring it into football, which is an amazing thing. But it's great to see that, you know, you look at Archie, you look at Harry coming through the ranks and they're, they're also coming from that kind of a background as well, which is, I, I think it's fantastic because uh, the just, pitches are getting better and better every year. Just getting another, used to playing the ball, especially in the Premier League. Just another story on Archie. Uh, I remember about three years ago, a former coach of his, uh, Thomas McStrabick, who's moved on now. And um, Leeds that time were still technically a long way behind other sports, but they were bringing in um, it's sort of a video analysis called Huddle. And basically, uh, the group he had, and he was unfamiliar with it as well. You need a little bit of technical background and knowledge on it. But the players can actually, it's like your homework. You can actually mm. break up um, the game and you can see exactly what you've done in the game, the positions you're, you took up, the movements, um, all the different uh, things that go on to be a good footballer. How many passes did you complete? Did you, um, you know, make forward runs? Did you get to the inline? Did you get crosses into the box? All these things. Mm. And he said he knew that the following session, a lot of the kids didn't really look at it, didn't really analyse their performances. They just went from one session to the next. Archie never, ever missed um, a video analysis of himself. He was, so you can see, even he must have been about 13, 14. Even then, he had that mentality. I go back to that word mentality again, where he was focused on being a footballer. He wanted to improve. He wasn't thinking, even though, he, and sometimes when you look at a game and, and without video analysis, when we kind of say, oh, he had a great game. And then when you go and look at it afterwards, it says, well, he could have done better there and he could have done, yeah. maybe he could have made a run there or he could have dropped in there, something like that. Archie looked at all that. So it was it was all about improving himself as a footballer. Uh, it's like um, the scholar in school who wants to progress all the time. And that was Archie's mentality. And of that group, a lot of them now have left the academy and look where Archie is. So there's a lot to us in in the work he put in, he definitely put in the work. It's it's a really interesting trait, Jerry, because not not all young players have it, and not all mm. talented young players have that ability to criticize their game, to analyze their game, to look at mm. uh, improving areas. I remember when I was playing when I was a young age, I was saying to my dad, I wasn't, I just wasn't, I was playing for a couple of clubs and I just wasn't getting game time, I wasn't playing at all. Um, there was other kids that I played with that were miles ahead of me, miles. I mean, dad said to me, don't worry about anybody else. Keep working on the game. Keep talking to your coaches. Keep refining what you're doing. You will, players peak at different times. I think by 18, I'd passed out a couple of those guys and I, I was playing on a regular basis with decent clubs. I, I'd moved to Shamrock Rovers and was playing regularly there. And these younger players had kind of faded away. And, and you kind of look at it, and as I've coached and, and got older and I've looked at younger players as well, the inquisitive kids, the ones that want to know more. And the big one for me is always the why. They want to know why they do this. If you're doing yeah. a drill in training, well, why are we doing this drill? Because it applies to this part of the pitch. And then they're like, right, got that. And the next why and the next why. And they're always looking at these constant little small improvements that you can make along the way. It's uh, a great many, trait to have in a young player because I don't think you're ever done learning ever at any age group. Yeah, but how many commentators have you heard so far? Obviously, we've been on the television so many times. I think it's 30 plus now, isn't it? But how many mm. times have you heard the commentators say, or the guy who's who's working with the commentator, I can't believe this kid is only 18 or 17 as he was. You know, yeah. he plays with so much maturity. Um, you know, he looks like a guy that's been playing football for 10 years in the championship mm. or at that level. And that doesn't come overnight. It's not like a switch, you turn it on. And that has to go down to the, the way the kid is. But from what I've been mm. told... He hasn't changed much since I, I knew him as a 12-year-old. 
a little bit older and a little bit wiser, you hope, but still very respectful to people, um, very mannerly. But I mean, you look at his background and uh, and still he listens. That's a very important factor as well. And I noticed, um, you know, you know, Daniel Farka when he when he goes out onto the field after a game, he always mm. takes a player aside and has a couple of words. And I remember uh, watching it with Archie, and I was intrigued. And you could see in Archie's eyes, he was listening to every word. He was taking it in. Like some players, they're tired. They've played 90-plus minutes. And, um, you know, it's like when you're finished your own job and you're ready to go out the door and the manager calls you and you kind of half listen to him, you know, because all you want to do is get off or get away before the traffic builds up or anything like that. But Archie was actually deadly focused on him. He was His eyes never, never left uh, the you know what Daniel was saying to him, and that's another thing as well. But just one yeah. thing, and I know you, your background is in the Dublin um, School Boys League, um, a mm-hmm. great School Boys League, and um, one of the best. But I remember um, Belvedere, and um, when I was scouting, um, yeah. Home Farm, Belvedere, uh, Cherry Orchard, um, Crumlin, Bush. I had a pal in uh, Belvedere called uh, Dave O'Connell, and, and I kept uh, asking him, I said, I'm getting players from home farm. I'm getting a kid. We got Robbie out of Crumlin, Robbie Keane, and uh, Willow Flood from Cherry Orchard. I oh, said, but yeah. we haven't got anybody from Belvedere. And he says, I'll give you a name of a kid, and it's going to make a huge impact at Leeds if you get him. And I says, what is his name? Ampadu, he says. But his <laughs> name was Kwame Ampadu. Was, so he was right in the way. It's, uh, yeah. Eaton, by the way, is, uh, is Kwame's son. So- but yeah. his, a lot of your viewers might not know his dad was a superb player. At 15, he was as good as the, as you get out there. He went to Arsenal, though. He chose Arsenal. But we've done well with mm. we, God Eaton, who I think you talk, you mentioned the first team earlier. I think he's been absolutely outstanding. If you, if ever a player has come into the team, if you go back to last August and, and think and look at it now, he has surpassed everything we expected. He's just been, and he was outstanding again last night for Wales. How uh, Chelsea sold him for seven million, bargain of the season. Yeah, yeah, it's there's there's so many good players in the Dublin District Schoolboys League. It's an, it is an incredible league. There's great players around the country in all leagues, but that's my background. But you're you're correct. The clubs you've mentioned as well, Belvedere, Cherry Orchard, Home Farm, all of them amazing clubs. I played in a Leinster U Cup final for Newtown Rangers against uh, Belvedere. Now we were 18s. You could play 17s and 18s at the time in the U Cup. But so Belvedere had two teams in it, the 18s and the 17s. Their 17s surpassed their 18s, and we played their 17s in the final. And there was a young man playing against me called Wes Hoolan, who absolutely yeah. ran the show. Absolutely ran the show. It was years later that I realized my dad showed me a newspaper clipping that we had from the game, and he was like, "That's you standing beside Wes Hoolan. You do realize you played against him." I was like, "That's the kid that scored both goals." He goes, "Yeah, he absolutely ran the show." There were scouts at that game from everywhere in England and Wes just glided across the pitch different level of intelligence but the players that Belvedere produced at that time any one of those players could have easily got picked up and gone somewhere else they were yeah. just it was a it's Belvedere is like a factory but well, Fairview Park is where they played and uh, yeah. it's a crazy thing how football works um they have been playing a team in Cork uh called Rockmount uh I think it was the FAIU Cup and mm. uh, last minute free kick, fluky goal, and it took it went back to a replay in Fairview Park. And Noel McCabe was the scout that time with Nottingham Forest, and he came along and he just seen this little kid with hair down over his shoulders, and he took a liking to him, Roy King. So yeah. football is strange, and people say scouting is an art. It's also very lucky. You know, you can be extremely lucky. Um, and um, he just could pick a kid and who's to know where he could go, you know. That's it, and we'll, we'll get to the kids in a second. Um, there's people talking about Ethan Ampadu in the chat here as well, and his dad as well. But for me, Ethan Ampadu has been the most consistent player Leeds have had all season. I think he's yeah. been phenomenal for Leeds. I think he doesn't get the plaud that sometimes he deserves because he's so consistent. So when you see these one off performances, like Rutter has or Cree has and they get the man the match award and you're like yeah Ethan was fine but we'll give it to this guy today and then the next game's like Ethan was great but he really stood out today we'll give it to him and he kind of goes under the radar a little bit with it but for me he's probably been the player of the year 
in terms of everything There's, that he's done. Yeah, next time uh, you're in moment. Ellen Road or some of your viewers go to the away games and when the opposition are attacking, whether from wide positions or down the middle, take a glance at Eaton's positioning. I always say great players. Lucas Redebi used to say that um, the first yard is in your head and yeah. uh, his positioning is just, I always say your starting position enables you to either get in and get the ball or not. Or you're either in the game with your starting position or you're out of the game. Yeah. And uh, he does that so well. His positioning is so good, you know? Yeah, it's it's all about mentality, isn't it? About reading the game and understanding where you're supposed to be and, you know, reading two or three passes ahead and seeing where you can be when, when the game progresses and understanding phases of play and stuff. It's it's natural to some people, like 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 everything in life. Some people pick it up naturally and can it becomes part of them. Other people have to to train and learn it, and it takes a bit more time. But um, being able to read a game the way they can is is, is phenomenal. You know, it's a, it really is a skill set in its own. Um, anyone who's asked the question, if there's a question mark at the end of it, I've kept it to the end, so you won't see the questions coming up on the screen. I, I will go through all of them when we get to the end of this. And um, but I did want to move on and talk about. We are going to get to Harry because there's people talking about Harry. We'll get we'll get to Harry in a minute. But I, I want to talk about Jerry. Um, the under-18 team this year. Um, they're in the FA Youth Cup semi-final against Millwall. They've just beaten Liverpool in the league. They beat Liverpool in the quarter-final of the FA Youth Cup final as well. They started off the season with Scott Gardner in charge. He did a really, really good job there. He's now progressed in, into the under-21 side to take over from Michael Scubale. And Rob Etherington has come in to take over at the under-18 side. And he is doing an incredible job so far. There's so many kids. I've got a list of them written down here that I've, that I've noticed this year that have stood out. You've got... Harvey Vincent, Freddie Lane for me against Liverpool was phenomenal in that game. You've got Rory Mahady or Mahadi, whatever way you want to pronounce that, and goal been brilliant. Uh, Ruben uh, Lapata White, who's apparently the next under 18 kid possibly to get his pro contract. Marty Wilson's been great all season. Harry's been in and out of that team. Joe Richards is there. Alfie Creswell is in that team as well. And then you've got the three players that have all got new contracts or got their first pro contracts this week, which is Sam Chambers, Louis Peary, and Josh McDonald. Two of them coming down from Scotland this just the start of this season in Louis Peary and Scott McDonald. What have you made, Jerry, to what the under-18 side are achieving this year? Because the FAU Cup for me is always a really good barometer of what your future success of these kids coming through. I go back to O'Leary's team and the youth, play, the youth team that came through that year with him as well and then Wilkinson's time as well. How big a deal do you think the FA Cup is first? And then of the players that are in that squad, who has really stood out to you this year? I think it's a huge thing. Um, it, it, it might have lost its... It's value over the years, but for me, it's still got that value. I mean, you go back to when we last won it in '97, uh, and we had phenomenal players: um, Harry Kuehl, Stephen McPhail, Jonathan Woodgate, Paul Robinson, great players: Matthew Jones and um, Wesley Boyle. So, yeah. it's very important. This is the first time we're back in a U Cup semi final since '98. Um, of the present players, you mention it, uh, Lapata White, I like him at the back. Very, yeah. very good player. Charlie Crew. Um, I'm sure most of you will know um, when um, Adam Pope threw a curveball at, uh, <laughs> at Daniel there as a, as a press conference and mentioned the young players coming through. He said there was one but he wasn't going to name him. Well, I'll name him. It's Charlie Crew, right. And he is a special player. Um, I think he's one that could definitely push on and step into the first team. Remember one thing about the youth team. We were very lucky with that team in 97. How many of them went on and played in the first team? But it's all about progression to the first team. And um, so when you look at it, but we have some, um, you know, really, really good players there. Um, obviously, uh, Wilson up front is a very, very good player. Mm. Uh, Freddie Lane, people forget Freddie Lane is just 16. And yeah, he, yeah he's, he's got uh, tremendous uh, close ball control. Very, very good player as well, you know. So, um, yeah, there's some great kids there. But being realistic, they're all not going to come through. If we get one or two out of them, they will go on and play in the first team. That's a bonus. And, and that would be the same with any club, whether it's Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Get one or two from your youth academy coming through every year. It's a bonus. And um, and don't forget, it doesn't cost the club any money. You know, OK, we paid a few quid uh, to Cardiff for Charlie Crew, and But 
it's pittance compared to what you would have to do to go out and, oh, yeah. and buy a player um you know in today's market especially if you go into the premier league you don't get much change out of 20 30 million now so you you get a player from the you know you get a if you can get another archie gray that, mm. that's that's as a business that's amazing you know but yeah it's they're doing a terrific job um there's a lad gone in there who i'm very very I've, I've never ever seen a guy so enthusiastic as a coach uh, and I think he's amazing. It's a great appointment. I'm delighted he's gone in. It's a guy called Alec Perver. And Alec is, um, I just, I, I've seen him working with young players. And he just, he, he's the kind of lad that you would jump over a 20-foot a, 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 a fence for. You know, yeah. he's got that motivational skills. And just to go back on coaching, um, there's a, the old story is what is a great coach? A guy that has all the technical drills or a guy that can motivate mm -hmm. a, a player to run through a, a brick wall. I, I would prefer the, the coach that can get a kid to go through a brick wall for them. And uh, that's what Alec Pervert is. He just inspires and he's a smashing guy, one of the nicest guys you'll ever come across. So I'm delighted he's pushed up with the 18s, but I'm delighted for them. Um, one thing I would say, because I'm sure quite a number of your viewers are based in the UK, especially in the Leeds area, Yorkshire area. Let's get down and support those kids. It means an awful lot to them. They're only 17, mm. 16, 17, 18 year old boys. And what must it be like um, to, to play in front of 10,000 or whatever plus? I know some of the players that played against Manchester United in 93 in that infamous U Cup final when there was 33,000 there. They still talk about it. They say that's one, uh, the likes of Noel Whelan, who had a good career lads that went on they still talk about that day so by getting down there it matters it does matter when they come out the tunnel and they see so many fans out there shouting them it might give them that extra percent to push on and do the job and uh they have home advantage and uh let's be, let's be proud of our kids and let's give them all the support um that they need on the night Ellen Road has a habit of helping Leeds teams when it's got a good crowd in there. Connor Cody said it this week with Leicester, saying he's mm. been in Ellen Road when he felt the crowd literally sucked the ball into the back of the net. He said it just, you feel it coming. And um, you know you're under pressure in that game. 6,000 tickets sold so far, which is really, really good. These, these are potentially some of the stars of the future. If if not, it's worth getting down and giving them, as Jerry said, the support. If you're in that area, God, if I lived there, I'd be at that game because... What I watched the game, the quarterfinal on LUTV against Liverpool, and it's one of the best games of football I've watched at any level in I recent agree with months. You. It was an incredible game that was played. I've never seen a Leeds team play with so much pace and commit mm -hmm. so many bodies forward and attack. I mean, Rory Mahadian goal was playing as a number six for most of the first half. He was practically on the halfway line for most of the game, spreading passes. Freddie Lane was operating nearly as a third striker from right back. Like it was, it was that attacking. They're an incredibly exciting team. They really, really are. They will miss Marty Wilson going into the semi final. He's obviously out with a back injury now at the moment. Um, and, and I did say in my news during the week that uh, Harry I'm, Gray I'm, will be involved. I'm not sure if, he won't um, be. if Max McFadden um, will be available either. He's, he's a terrific well. talent. He was actually the best player in that game. Uh, I believe he's, he's struggling with an injury. Charlie Crew was struggling with an injury, but. You'll get that with 18 year olds. I'm sure if you ask somebody from Millwall, they will probably tell you the same. They have young lads struggling, uh, you know, because their bodies are adjusting all the time. So I just hope um, that uh, Max and Charlie can play in the semi final. They're two huge players, you know. Uh, you're right, uh, Marley Wilson will be out of that game, yeah. Yeah, it just a West Yorkshire retro gamer asking here. Yeah, it looks like Marley Wilson will miss the rest of the season. It just, they, they they described it as a substantial back injury, so that that does does give the impression that he probably missed missed those games. But it, but that gives opportunities now for other kids to come in and get a yeah. crack at this yeah. and, and prove their worth. And that's what's great about this. When someone else can't play, you've got a squad of players there. Somebody else, and they have rotated this under eighteen team a hell of a lot this year. Like it's yeah. it's not the same eleven players every week. It's a very different look. And even the goalkeeper, they've yeah. rotated between Chambers and Gold. They've rotated the three keepers that they have at that age group around mm -hmm. a fair bit. So um yeah, there's there's an awful there's an awful lot um. You would fancy them against Millwall, Jerry, which is not I a would, given. Would you fancy football them against is Millwall. funny and it's on the nice. Yeah. And 
and they're young players, they're young kids, or some 16 year olds, 17 year olds. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, I just hope they're strong enough mentally, and it goes back to that mentality to cope with the atmosphere and cope with the big occasion. But you have to remember they're very inexperienced on both sides. So, some players will not play well, some will thrive on it. So, you just hope that we have more players thriving than not thriving. Uh, but it's the same with for Millwall, you know, they're young boys, yeah. you know. Yeah, it is. We'll, we'll, we'll get into. Um, I actually keep saying this to people: if you haven't, if you haven't watched that game against Liverpool, go and make it your business mm. to go and watch that because it's 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 very 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 well worth your while. You won't. Um, if you like football, you won't regret watching the game. Some great mm. goals in it as well. Um, yeah, a couple of, as we said, a few have already signed their pro contracts: Sam Chambers, Louis Peary, and Josh McDonald. Leeds are doing a very good job recruiting young players from outside of England as well. Yeah. They seem to have their finger on the pulse in Scotland. And Mahady, Peary, and McDonald, the three of them came down this summer, just gone um, from Scotland. And well, two, two of the three have already signed pro deals. Very Mahady looks like he'd be pretty close to a pro deal as well, but he's got some he's got some more time as well because he's, he's quite young. It's it's in, it's impressive. It's in, it's impressive, and it's it's great to see that there's a really strong bunch coming through there. There is a bit of a rebuild going on behind the scenes there, Jerry. After the the change in model of recruitment has has seems to have, have moved with the new with Gareth Steinson's team in place. There seems to be also a new version of recruitment for the underage. We've got an under twenty one side where. We've seen a lot of players either be released by the club, sold, or sent out on loan who won't come back. We've got players aging out of the system this year as well who will be unlucky, I think, to, to remain at the club beyond this season, which is unfortunate, but that's that's the nature of, of underage football. You get to a point. A lot of these under-18s will make up a bunch of that squad next year, Jerry. It's a bit yeah, of a step you're up. Right. You're right. Uh, you have to... It's all about progression in football. Um, yes, it's great to have an occasion like a... FAU Cup semi-final at Ellen Road but let's look at the bigger picture it's about progression and uh, the pathway forward for these players and yes some of them will go on to 21s some of our 21s at the moment will be leaving the club and that's football um, mm. and I go back to again 97 uh, we won the FAU Cup 98 we actually won the Reserve League uh, Eddie Gray was involved in both so it's a natural progression. Obviously, the Reserve League is now replaced by the 21. So you're talking about our better players, the Charlie Cruz, who's already actually captaining the 21s, the Max McFadden's, uh, the McDonald's, the Wilson's, um, the Freddie Lane's. Yeah, they have to move on to the 21s. That's the next step for them. Uh, maybe one of them can skip the 21s like Lewis Cook did and Archie did and push mm -hmm. on to the first team. And that will be a bonus. But remember, it's all about progression and pushing on. And like, that's the same in every club. You know, we have to always remember that. Like, yeah, we could go on and win the FAU Cup and none of them go through to the first team. Is that success mm -hmm. long term? Not really. You know, whereas say, for example, with Millwall, they might get stuffed at Ellen Road, but two or three of them get on to the first team in the next year or two. So I always say that it's about the next, especially in, in development, it's about the next step. It's about pushing on um, on the pathway to the first team. And every young player, and he should always grab it when he gets a chance. Look at Archie, he grabbed it at 17. Um, when it's there for you, when you get that chance, when you, Lewis Cook did it at 17 as well, when you're out on that park in front of 35, 36,000, that's what you've been training for yeah. going to academies your mom and dad taking you there for the last 10 15 years that's what it's all about getting there you're on the big stage now can you perform now can you do it and uh let's hope some of them will do it you know yeah people asking about uh, jeremiah mullen and chris moore as well chris moore looks really really good player jeremiah mullen's got it on loan to inverness and i yeah. believe has a pretty bad injury and will miss the rest of the season by yeah. the looks of things there so he'll be heading back down soon but there is chris moore looks like he talent scubala talked about him earlier on this year about taking a player that they they put stretch assignments on him as well obviously he had a pre-season with the first team as well and looked pretty good when he did did talk out against manchester united for the first team as well so yeah. there's a there's a good group there the question we get to harry now good. The question will always be, Jerry, they don't yeah. always progress. It doesn't always yeah. happen. And it's also some of them will move on and do well. Max Dean has done well since he moved to oh, MK right. Zons. Yeah. I know he's out injured he as, well. as well. Um, but the problem with Chris Chris Moore is 
he's a central defender. He's, he's his best position as central defender. But look who's ahead of him. You know, uh, you have Charlie Cresswell, but uh, uh, someone mentioned when is Charlie Cresswell going to get his uh, game? And I know Charlie, and I've been he's been over to Galway three times in the Galway Cup, and a lovely lad. Couldn't meet a nicer lad. But you have to be honest; it's, it's not about uh, personalities. It's about being good enough for the first team, mm. and nobody's going to take Joe Roden's position. You know, let's be honest about it. And uh, sure. Joe Roden has been the best centre half in that championship all season. So. What do you do? And the other thing we have to remember um, with young players, and don't forget the all have agents who want to move them on, etc. And uh, I just quickly, I just seen where uh, Nottingham Forest were actually asking their agents um, to get players away. They're actually leaving them with the agents, telling them like Brendan Johnson, they wanted him out because they had to to try and get money in, as you know why. Uh, but yeah. uh, just to get back. Players can't wait around either. I mean, um, Chris would be about 20 now. How long more can he wait? And, I mean, you look at Joe Roden. I mean, he's only 26. So if we sign him in the summer, he's going to be there for the next four years. So Chris can't wait four years. And the same with Charlie Cresswell. And that's football, you know. So sometimes it's the positioning of the player, where where his best position is. Uh, and if if there's no one really ahead of him that like you go back to Gary Kelly, one of our best full backs ever. Gary was very very lucky. Uh, Mel had got a bad injury, and the lad that mm-hmm. came in from Swindon uh, also got a bad injury. Gary was a striker, and Howard Wilkinson just tried him as in preseason as a right back. And look look where it went to after that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's opportunities, and it's sometimes a bit of luck. It's about getting that moment and being lucky enough mm. to be in the right place at the right time. Some players have to wait, and some players we might because I love Charlie Quay as well. I think he's he's absolutely mm. good enough to be in a championship starting eleven. But sometimes it's just you can't get in, and it can just be about timing, and you end up going somewhere else to try and find your your way back. And mm. I was a big fan of what Sean McGurk was doing under age of Leeds, especially this season. I thought he was doing mm. really well, but he was getting to that point where he was aging out of the system, and the club needed to make a decision. He was a number ten. You're going well. Are you going to get in at a Cree Somerville, Jorginho Rutter, Matteo Joseph, and you go. Even mm. Joffy Gellhart's ahead of him in the pecking order. And that's a hell of a pecking order to be behind and trying to get ahead of. So you go off, mm. you go off and do it somewhere well, else. Matthew, and he's gone Matthew Joseph has, really has well just, there. Has, has jumped the queue, hasn't he? I mean, yeah. a year or two. See, no, no one stands still in football. A year or two ago, we would have been all talking about Joffy, um, yeah. you know. But Matthew has pushed on now, and he, he's gone ahead of Joffy, and now Joffy mm-hmm. is left out. But you know, again, I, I keep referring to this word mentality. Like, mm. what does Joffrey do? Does he kind of sulk about it and feel sorry for himself? Or does he grit his teeth to say, I'm going to get a chance somewhere along the line. I'm going to get 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And when I'm out in that park, when I have those okay. 10 minutes, I'm going to make every second count. And he's got to say, I'm going to prove I'm a better player than Matteo Joseph. We don't think so at the moment, but... That's his mentality has to be like that. And, um, you know, that's football. And the same with Charlie Cresswell. Charlie Cresswell, within himself, and I'm talking about how he would feel, he's got to believe inside he can do a better job than Joe Roden. Otherwise, what's the point being there? And that yeah. applies the same with um, Charlie Crew when he gets in. Charlie Crew has to got to go in with that attitude. When I get in, I can do a better job than Groove. Or I can do a better job than Kamara, you know, yeah. and and that's what football is all about. And if they don't have that mentality, well, then they're wasting their time. They might as well just slip away. And and that's what you want. You want little like remember David Batty coming in at nineteen. I remember watching him play in a West Riding Cup game against Halifax, and um, he walked out on the field as if he was the king. He, he said, I own this pitch. This is my home. I'm going to run the show. And I, and I says, what an arrogant little son so but what a player. And and that's the mentality you're looking for in young players. Uh, and it's hard to get, you know? Yeah. There's a, there's a model that, in my job, there's a man that I know, like you mentioned him, Chris Smith, who has a model called KSA. KSA stands for Knowledge, Skills and Attitude. Mm-hmm. And I took it and I applied it to my coaching because it applies, in my opinion, it applies to more than just work. It applies to everything. The way it breaks down is 
knowledge you'll learn over time and you'll get from other people by talking to them, asking questions and being interested. Skill, you can be taught, but attitude is all you. And the problem with the, with the first two are if the attitude isn't right and you haven't got a good attitude, the first two don't matter. It's the attitude that drives the next two. Having the right attitude means you'll go out of your way to learn what you need to learn. You'll constantly look to improve. A good attitude means that you'll work on your skill level and getting better mm. and, and keep on refining your, your skill. But the attitude is the only one that the player brings to the table himself. The other two can be given to him by other people, but the attitude is very much on your shoulders to do it. So if you have the right attitude and you have the right mentality coming in, when you get those moments, as you say, about making the pitch yours, yeah. you'll take those moments and you'll apply it to that. But it's, it's attitude and mentality are so important, especially with young kids. And I keep saying this again. Um, I worked for a man over here once called Fergal Quinn. He owned, owned a supermarket chain called Super mm. Quinn. And he used to always say, if you think you're done learning, you've got a problem because you're never done learning. And if you think you know well, it all... Well, Billy Bremner used to always say, the day I hang up my boots, that's the day I say I met it as a footballer. That was Billy yeah. Bremner. Yeah, at the yeah. very end, when you can look back at it. Billy, yeah. just mentioned about Billy, I mentioned David Batty earlier. Uh, John Giles used to always say about Billy, Billy used to think he was the greatest footballer in the world. He could be up against Pele, George Best, Eusebio, the whole lot of them. They were all players from the 70s. The older ones will know who I'm talking about. And and Billy used to think, I'm the best player. This is my, this is my pitch. I'm going to show you all what a great player he is. And he had that mentality, and it worked for him. You know, he did it probably in 1974 Cup, uh, World Cup final. He was probably the best player in, in Germany, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Jerry, we move on a little bit. Uh, just watching the time. Just some quest questions I want to get to. And one of them ties us up quite mm. well, actually. gets us moving in the right direction. There's, everyone's asking this question. How good is Harry Gray? Now, you mentioned him a year ago. You were here and you said, there's a young lad in the academy called Harry Gray. Keep an eye on him. Less than 12 months later, everyone's talking about him. We've seen Manchester City, and you talked about, you know, Fendi spending Gorman. a few quid on a young player now because, you know, buying Charlie Crew from from, from from Wales didn't cost an awful lot. It's mm. chump change compared to what you could potentially get in the future. Or if you're a buying club, what he would cost you to buy in the future. And you look at Finley Gorman and him and Harry Gray, same age group, around the same time, and he's gone for a British record £5 million or will end up being £5 million pounds for a 15-year-old to mm. Manchester City, and he's taken that, which you can understand from his parents' perspective as to why. Harry is the next one, and apparently every everyone who's worth their salt in football is keeping a very close eye on Harry Gray's development, as well as his brother, Archie. There's been rumours this year mm. in the press that Liverpool are planning a double swoop for both Harry and Archie to try and bring both of them in. Remains to be seen whether that can ever happen, but everyone's curious to see from where he was last year. We've now seen his name pop up in lots of places. We've seen him score goals for the under 18s. It should also be pointed out. What is he? 16, 15. I think he's 15. 15. He's just turned 15. The back end of last year, I think it was last September. Yeah. yeah. And also Charlie crew, we've mentioned here as well, who by the way, was called up to the Welsh under 21 yeah. squad has captain the Leeds under 21s is mm. 17 years of age. So these players have a huge amount of time. So a 14 year old like Harry Gray playing four years ahead of his age group with the under 18 team this season is a hell of a stretch, but to do it and to score goals is really impressive. Before we get to the question of how good is Harry Gray, we should also caveat this by saying there's no guarantee that anyone becomes no a ready-made pro footballer in four or five years time. It's there's still a process that he has to go through and, we should very much be on the mindset of give the kid time, give them all time. Let's not be in a rush to push mm. these kids in. I've seen Diego Montiero mentioned as well. He's only 19 years of age. He has plenty of time on his on his uh, calendar as well before he needs to be pushing, knock on the first team door. So let them develop, give them time. Don't put too much pressure on them. But Harry is definitely a name, Jerry, that's been um, getting a, a hell of a lot of talk recently. Yeah, as, as you said, let's be patient with Harry. Let's not... Uh... He's a different type of player, different character to Archie. He's a lot more extrovert than Archie. Uh, he's very confident, loves scoring goals. Uh, all he wants to do is score goals on the football field. But that's a good thing. All great strikers have that trait. Um, his movement is very good for a kid. His pace is very good. Takes up great positions, decision-making, uh, and finishes so what more do you want in a striker? He has all the abilities to go to the very top. But let's be fair to the boy. He's 15 years of age. He's only a kid. Give him time. Don't put big uh, weights on his shoulder yet. Mm. He will come good. Lewandowski, uh, I think even Daniel Farkas 
referred to him. I think it was mid twenties before he hit the the heights. Same with Harry Kane. Harry Kane was out and loan four times, and each one of those managers that had him out and loan never rated him. And um, so I, I always say it takes time, and it's the most specialized position on the football field because goals win matches, goals gain your points in games. So let's not expect, um, you know, putting this thing a wonder kid uh, over mm. his shoulders. He's a young lad. Let him be a lad. Let him be a teenager uh, and welcome him and support him and push him on. And he will get there. But let's not let's not burden him with too much uh, too early. Yeah, he's there's a talent there, but a talent needs yeah. to be nurtured. Talents don't honed. get you there alone. There's other factors. But uh, he comes from a great family background and um and the other good thing that will probably motivate him is the fact that he wants to emulate his, there's great competition between himself and Archie. Exactly. He wants to emulate Archie. So there's a, there, there is a, a carrot there to, uh, ahead of him to, to go for. And, um, well, yeah, I mean, some of his stuff is up on YouTube at the moment. If you get a chance to, I think there's a 20 minute footage of the game mm -hmm. against Liverpool last week in the league, not the FA U cup, and just look at his performance in the first half, the positions he gets into. Um, I always say with strikers, uh, and the, the most difficult position to get space in a football field is the opposition six-yard box. Because if you get that half yard in there, nine times out of ten, it's a goal. So, And he can find that bit of space. I mean, that's, that's an art in itself. There's a footballing intelligence there to be able to find those spaces. Yeah, well, yeah, he has the he has the intelligence, the aware, awareness around them, positioning, uh, his movement, you know, and he's getting better and better. Uh, the one thing about Harry, why he might have been a little bit stifled lately, he's had this growth spurt, and he's he's having problems or has had problems because I looked at Harry there uh, last Saturday. He must be over six foot now, so he's he must have gone up six inches in the last eighteen months, you know. And that's you know that takes its toll on uh, you know. So again, he's developing uh, his body as well as as a footballer. So remember that as well. Uh, he's going to fill out. He's only fifteen, you know. Yeah. In fact, he's not even allowed playing the U Cup because of his age. Think about that. So let's not um, expect too much too early. It'll come. Yeah. Patience yeah, is a great word in football. Yeah, and as they, 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 they say, it's um, at the age that he's at now, his body's only forming itself into what it will be when he's 19, 20, 21. There's a long, long time to go left. Well, I would just say strikers balance. hit their peak around 26. Yeah. That's 11 years. Yeah, he's got some, he's got plenty of time. He has plenty of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's really it, yeah. Look, it's a, it's a it's a great show. He's the money is the thing. I I, I lean to the fact that there's Leeds connections between the Greys to think that they'll stick it out long enough as long as the club matches the ambitions of not just them but the younger players that we have coming mm -hmm. through. As long as the club can match the ambitions of those players, there's no reason for them to look elsewhere right now. So they've got plenty of time on their hands. A lot of people yeah. asking about will the big six come sniffing around? I think they definitely will because they're also and this is where the Finley Gorman thing comes in. If you look how much Real Madrid paid for Jude Bellingham, but if they could have got him at a 15 year old or a 14 year old, how much less he would have cost them. And I think what you've seen with Manchester City's tactics are get them before they even get to that level. So you kind of yeah. bring in these players in space, spend five million on them now because he could be worth a hundred million by the time he's 20. So get That's it now. True. Yeah, it's the which business. Is, which is, it's a business. Yeah, it's a dangerous one to, to, to do because they're so young and they are kids. It's a big gamble, but I suppose if you've got to kind of oil well to so them. I, I will say the expertise around. is there now, though, that wasn't there maybe 20, 30 years ago. And um, to have the people around them to kind of, because remember, I'm going to use the word boys, some of them, and that's all mm -hmm. they are, boys. And they have so many things going on in their lives. And they haven't got the experience of handling situations like, and um, and things come at them in different ways. So you need people around them, the right type of people. And um, I, I think now we're going to get more young players coming through than ever before because of the people that are surrounding them. I think years ago, too many good kids. And, Jerry, you'll be 
you've been known you know this is the amount of kids that uh, came back from England to Ireland yeah. uh, and Tom will come back to the 90s and before that and never even kicked the ball again after that they were absolutely battered you know so yeah. we have to guard against that that we're losing too many good players uh, and it's nothing to do with their ability it's just not having the right people around them to just help them and they need yeah. help like like in any walk of life you know I had friends and teammates when I was 13 up till I was 16 they went across mm. to England to sign for clubs and I, I had one friend particularly actually went to Leeds but there was a cut in the academy at the time they reduced the amount of numbers of kids that they had and he was sent home he didn't kick a ball for three years one of the most talented footballers I ever played with ever mm. a guy like Patrick Burnell just a phenomenal footballer could do anything with a football you asked him to do with it gifted gifted should have been a pro footballer but came back it just wasn't the same and then you look at and again I came from, I was lucky where I grew up Richard mm. Dunn grew up there Bobby Keane grew up there there was there was a host of of kids. Uh, Keith Fahey was a um, man. Uh, sorry, at Sharmer Grovers. Now he was down the road. He's playing down in Oban. So there was a ton of kids around that area that all came through around the same time. And there was a lot of other kids who just didn't make it and came home and just lost lost the the, the, the love for the game when they came back. And it was a tougher well, time. The there wasn't schools. The there wasn't players. sport. I seen was yeah. a kid that went to Manchester United from Crumlin, and Paddy Lee, and a little boy yeah. that went from Stella Maris to Tottenham Hotspur, Alan Mannix. And they were terrific players in the nineties, but got lost in the, you know. So it's 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 very very tough for young boys, um, whether they're coming from Ireland or local lads around the Leeds area. It's not easy, and people they yes, to have a gift. They're they're better than most other kids, but there's so much well, more to developing a player and making the player into a first team player. So much. I think. I think the stats that I that I saw from an, from an Irish kid's perspective heading across to the UK, one percent of the total volume that go over will get a pro contract, and of that one percent, one percent will get a second deal. That's how small the margins are. It's tiny, yeah. and you've every parent in the world hoping their kids yeah. gonna be the next Cristiano Ronaldo and fighting for that, and it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percentage. It of was that easy. Maker. We'd have we'd how many billion players out there? It's not that easy. And uh, as you said, uh, it takes a special type of person as well as footballer to go on and play, even play in championship, never mind the Premier League, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's credit to the ones to get there, you know. Yeah. No matter what level of performance they can turn in every week, but the fact that they got there, you know, because there's thousands more that never get to that stage. Yeah. Jerry, we'll rattle through a couple of questions um, just because yep. I know we're getting your time here. So we'll start off with this one um, from SheePC. Afternoon, gents. Question for me. Who should we be looking out for in the next couple of years? Uh, it's a difficult one. Um, there's some good players coming through. There's a young boy playing with the 15s, Logan White, that's doing very, very well. Um, we signed him from Doncaster. Uh, there's a boy called Oliver Bolt who's banging in goals right, left and centre. He's with the same group, the 15s. Uh, I believe as a collective, the 16s are very good, but not really a player stand out at the moment, but they're very good as a, as a as 16s. I've already highlighted the 18s. I don't really want to go down by, below that. And, and to be fair to the club, they might not be naming 14 and 13-year-olds, um, you know, because they're very young and they have a long way to go. Uh, but um, they're the ones I'd be looking at at the moment. Um, you know, as I said, it's only, it's only a small percentage that will come through. <sighs> Probably Crew, Charlie Crew, um, Max McFadden, I think, has a very good chance, and McDonald. They're the three that have caught my eye, and maybe Lopata White, uh, the four that have caught my eye in the youth team. Um, they're 17, 18 year olds. Um, Freddie Lane, 16. Mm. Uh, but Let's be fair, they're not all going to come through. And uh, if we can get one from that. So if you want to nail it down and put me on the spot, I'd go with Charlie Crew. I would Crew. never do that, sir. Charlie Crew. Yeah. You know, looks like uh, it. You know, and if we get someone else with Charlie Crew into the first team mm. in the next couple of years, we've done well. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it'd be fantastic. You're one or two of every age group. You're doing really, really well. I mean, yeah. your future's based on your youth academy. You can keep producing mm. young players. I mean, some of them will go on and play at other clubs. 
don't get yeah. me wrong, you like your Max Steens that will go to NK Dons and there'll be others, you know, Lewis Bates and things like that. But uh, we're only concerned about Leeds United and who'll get into the first team there. And as I said, if you were put me on the spot, uh, I mean, I'm not going to name 10 players because that's been unrealistic. I would yeah. just probably go with um, Charlie Crew. Yeah, yeah, good shout. Uh, Jerry, children being uh, signed from academies for £5 million. What's your thoughts on this? Should we have a cap? Yeah, well, I, I can only get my own personal view. Um, yeah. I think from my experience, it's too much money. Um, and I think it's putting too much pressure. Like we mentioned the boy, uh, Findy Gorman, and I know he's left Leeds and we're not concerned with the boy anymore. And that's sad facts of life. But the pressure is on him. And if he doesn't come good in the next four or five years at City, people will look and say, what a waste of money. And I just think it's um, it's an awful lot of pressure on a young on young shoulders. And it goes back to, um, say, like, if you, if and I don't like doing this, but I'll do it because it's a question directed at me. If you were putting the value on Harry Gray now, you'd probably be thinking about the same. But he's a 15-year-old boy, and... Uh, we have to guard him. We have to we have to be responsible as adults and say, listen, he's only a boy, and that's all he is. And let's not be putting this kind of pressure, i.e., big money uh, amounts on young players, because um, the media uh, have a responsibility, but they just want to sell newspapers or uh, get clicks or whatever they want to do. Um, I just think, remember, there's somebody's lads. You know, and and let's let's give them time. You know, and uh, again, going back to what I said a few minutes ago, uh, we need the right people around them. We have some fantastic people up at at Tor Barch now, looking after these kids. But they're only there for a certain length of time when they're out around town and things like that. And 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 they're, they're kids, and they haven't got the maturity and the experience to deal with it. And they're hearing these stories, and and sometimes. They just lose track of themselves. And it doesn't matter how level-headed they are. It's very easy to lose track of yourself. So let's be let's just let's just uh, as a whole a football family, let's be careful uh, how we um you know what, what, how we put players and, and money on them because I think mm. uh, it just um it's 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 a lot of pressure for young players. I, I'd like to know, and I, if I was doing it again and I had the time and was involved in football, I'd study the model in Europe and how do they look after the young players. We seem to put them on a pedestal um, for yeah. too young, you know. And then if they don't come through it, we seem to knock them, you know. And I just think, you know, I mean, you look at Manchester City, uh, probably have invested more than any club in Europe, never mind the UK, on their academy players um, the last 10 years or so. How many have come through? Not many. Yeah, and they've broken... So where have all broken, those kids gone? Well, that's it. They, they've broken transfer records, not just with Finley, but they also broke yeah. the transfer record in the summer as well, signing an underage player as well, and a 16 player as well. So they've they've, like... For me, personally, I, I I think the league and the governing bodies need to probably have a look at it now and start safeguarding yeah. that age. I mean, 16, God, I can't, at 16, I didn't know what I was doing. At 18, I still didn't have a clue what I was yeah. doing. At 15, that, making a, a decision, like that is a massive decision, you know? Now, when we think back to our ages, when we were 18, 19, 20, even some of us 21, 22, and we were staffed as, you know, we were running around like, you know, happened the time of our lives and, 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 and probably losing <laughs> track of ourselves. Like, you know, um, so you're talking about these boys yeah. that are just kids. They're 15, 16, 17. And we're saying like, we expect them to, 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 to behave like, um, like choir boys and, and be disciplined. And I mean, I heard a story with Manchester city and uh, someone might know out there if it's true or not, where even the academy boys have their own chefs. Not surprised. Not surprised. You know, academy boys have their own chefs. At the end of the day, let them be kids. That's yeah. just my thinking. It didn't do uh, some of our best players over the years, the Gary Speeds and the David Bashes and players like yeah, that, Fabian Depp. You know, yeah. we let them develop as young men. 
early on. Didn't do them any harm. They still had good yeah. careers, you know. Give them an edge. Give them an edge. You could argue. You know, have to work for it. Have to be You know, you have to fight for it a little bit harder. Everything, not just the football, but everything. But yeah. A uh, question on Archie Jerry. Do you think Archie has a better height or a higher ceiling than Calvin Phillips had in another Leeds Academy project? Um, yeah, do you think Archie can? Uh, you know, think I'll Archie answer can, the question as it's directed at me. I would say yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. I think Archie, but uh, Calvin achieved so much. He was a late developer. He came into the nice. academy uh, quite late and 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 he came he came through the ranks quite late he wasn't one that you would have been picking out at 14 15 16 maybe even 17 uh but i just think with luck and we have to remember that word as well archie could go to the very top uh he's the best i've seen in a long time i'd have to nearly go back to o'leary's group to compare a young player with him. I think he's just got everything. I mean, let's be honest about what he's doing at, well, he's just turned 18, what he has been doing at 17. Let's be fair, Calvin wasn't doing it at 17. No, he wasn't. No. Good shout. A question come in from Warpig. As part of the education, do trainees write match reports at Leeds about the professionals in their positions as some other clubs do? I've heard that done in the past. I'm not sure if it's a modern thing, but you used to have to watch senior games and you'd watch a player that plays in the position that you play in underage and you'd write a match report on that player and what they did well and then try and apply that stuff to your own game. I don't know if they do it anymore, though. I'm not sure. <laughs> Again, uh, I'd have to check that out. But I think Huddle covers a lot of things from what I've been told about Huddle. It, it's all done on video analysis. It's like probably education now. If sure, you, if you want to educate yourself, you can do it on YouTube now, can't you? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can get a better perspective on what what you're studying. So I know um, going back to Archie Gray and his group, um, like they can they can take each kid and they can he can look at himself. He can look at the different scenarios that happened in the game, the positions he took up, uh, his movement. Uh, the decision making he made, all the things that make uh, a footballer. So uh, you know, in terms of education, I think that's the best education you mm. you can have. Um, if if I was a young player, depending on my position, you can do the same with whatever player you want to look up to, whatever player that's playing in the Champions League or Premier League in that position, and just look at some of the areas that, like. He takes up like the positions he takes up is is mm. his movement, um, his link up play, uh, his support play. Um, as I always say, if it, say for example, a midfield player, apart from the basics being able to pass a ball and and take it down, how, how quickly does he get into the box? Does he do overlaps? Uh, does he get crosses in? Things like that. So you pick a player. I would, if I had a midfield player, I would pick a player somewhere, you know, in Europe or whatever, and I would break down his game and and break it down into small segments and look at his uh, those areas. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, rather Good than, answer. I just think the days of writing things down. I so just, much soft. I think it's a better way. Uh, just my way yeah. of. Uh, I think. And I'm old school, by the way. I did all that in copy books, but I'd say the modern teaching methods would be video analysis. Yeah. Yeah, visual learners, that's my background. I'm a learning development specialist. That's my mm. job. And I can tell you for a fact, people, there are more activist learners or visual learners in the world than any other type of learning. So um, being able to watch something and break it down mm. that way will be will, will suit an awful lot more people than, than those just doing it academically. But yeah. Uh, question from Stevie. Um, the player that Frack was talking about, we think it's Charlie Crew. Charlie Crew is the player we think Frack was, was mentioning. Yeah, it was great stuff. Uh, move on to the next one, rattle through these, Jerry. Who do you, do you think will lift the FAU Cup, Jerry? Uh, well, That's there's Manchester nice City, so they be the danger yeah. team. Um, I'm guessing, and I, I don't know a lot about Millwall, but I know they're very good in their own league, but they're playing at a, a lower grade than Leeds are. But I'm guessing it will be a Leeds Manchester City final. Maybe you can ask me that question when that game comes about. Yeah, we will. You know, we'll you know, I suppose, yeah. in fairness, to, to answer the question, Manchester City, with the money that they have thrown at their academy, they should have the best footballers in Europe at that age, never mind England. Both cup finals are cup finals. They're a one-off. 
and our kids, if they believe in themselves and with the motivation skill, as, as I said, of Alec Perver behind them, uh, I think anything can happen. I think they can reach for the stars. Yeah, I agree. Question from Gary Davis. Haven't we just signed a rugby player's young lad? I heard something about this. There's some famous rugby player who leaves may have signed his son. That I don't know. Uh, that that's a curveball that I just can't answer. Uh, I, I did hear heard that one yet. I don't know if it was a square ball or somewhere. I heard someone mention this. So I so Gary, you're not alone in hearing it. I have no detail or fact on it, so I can't tell you for sure. Well, um, Gary, you caught me on that one. I, I I just don't know about that one. Yeah, I think it was a, it's something floating around the right. It'll become clearer, I'm sure, in time. A question from West Yorkshire Retro Gamer. Marty Wilson, what is his ceiling? He's an absolute beast. And Rob, as you say, looks like a superb young coach. Yeah, Marty Wilson, what what are your thoughts on Marley and, and his I think for uh, Marley Park? could have a great career in football. Um, I don't know a lot about him. I know he's represented by Ian Hart. Um, I like him a lot, but I think there's a lot of work to be to do with the player yet mm. um i've seen a lot of players like marley over the years but it just raises an out and out striker and um i hate comparing young players but i wouldn't put him in harry gray's league yet but yeah it's it's up to marley how far he wants to get in football just that's a question that i would always put to young players remember one thing coaches can guide you can pass on information can direct you can help you in any way but how far you're getting football is down to you yourself. Yeah. And I always believe that 90% of footballers all over the world at all levels of football never reach their potential. It's that 10% that go and reach the levels that they can attain and go and do it. And um, Marley is one of these lads could get to the very, very top. But how much work, and I'm talking about overall work, will he do to get to that level? I don't know. Uh, maybe Ian Hart would know that answer, but I think uh, I think um, he's, he has the potential, but uh, I think he needs a lot of work on yet. That's just my thoughts on Marley Wilson. Yeah. That's fine. I'd love to ask Ian Hart myself. Been trying to pin Ian Hart down for about eighteen months now and can't get can't manage to do it, which is a shame. Mm. But he's a tough man to get hold of. Um, Jerry, a random question: Any left backs floating around in the underage that we should be keeping an eye on? Because I know there was that issue with. <sighs> Last year, again, talking to somebody it, else was saying it's there's funny. no left backs in the 21 side either. Yeah, it's funny. And I don't really see a, a, a guy like all the players I've mentioned, none of them have been a left back. So I don't really see a left back there that I can see that would go on. I don't see a Charlie Taylor. Uh, I mm. don't see uh, another Ian Hart. I don't see, um, no, I just I haven't seen any. Uh, yes, that's uh, you would kind of say he's got something, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's a pissy, but do you know what? Do you know what's wrong, Edger? There's not a lot of left side of players or no. left full of players. And um, if you look at it, really, you know, left full of players are in the minority. So it's it's a great position to have, but not many uh, are playing it. Or, and I mean, you go through even the Premier League and you, you name a top left player that says is world class. It's very hard to find them. Yeah, in my opinion, anyway, one. I haven't seen. I mean, let's be honest, but the best one, even though he played left back initially with Bayern Munich, but he was mostly known as a right back. But mm. I don't see a Philip Lamb now. I know, Lamb, yeah. You know, to me, he was the best full back I've ever seen in my lifetime. And um, I mean, I go back to the best left back I would have seen. I wasn't. Uh, even though I'm quite old now, but I, I didn't see a lot of Terry Cooper. Um, and back then in Ireland, you didn't get much footage. But the best I ever seen was Tony Dorigo. I haven't seen a full back at Leeds, a left back, anything near Tony Dorigo. And that's gone back to the 90s. So that's my answer to that. It's been a problem position for Leeds for a while. I think since Ian Hart uh, moved on from Leeds, the pretty left back spot's pretty much been a problem position for Leeds over the years. And not again, as you say, not the only club that have that have struggled to fit fit that position. I think white yeah, inverted I mean, fullback is becoming a you, common you thing. You know, you look at you look you go through the the top sides. You know, uh, don't see an outstanding left back at Chelsea. Don't see an outstanding left back at Spurs. Don't see an outstanding left back. Probably Robertson, but I don't think he's at the levels of a few years ago. 
but he's mm. probably still one of the best left backs in the Premier League. But there should be a young lad coming through now. Uh, I don't see any of them, you know. And even in Europe, you go through the left backs. Um, probably Alfonso Davies, but I think he's gone back. A, he's not the player he was a couple yeah, of years ago. He was Byron, years ago now. And you know, so you look at you, you know, I'm thinking. Who is an outstanding left back in football? I'm sure some of your viewers out there will pick somebody somewhere along the line, you know. But um, mm. I think it's just a position that we're not producing that many great left backs, you know. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Dennis Ehrman's mentioned there as well. Another player, fantastic left back as well, but didn't didn't stick it out with us, unfortunately. So went the, went the other direction. Uh, last two questions, Jerry, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Jer asked Jerry, Archie and Harry have an even younger brother that is very promising also. Am I right? Uh, I think it could be referring to Jacob, but Jacob is their cousin. That's Eddie's grandson, and uh, he plays in the twelves. He's a he's a very very good talent. So I assume that's who they're talking about is Jacob. Uh, I'm not aware of a uh, younger brother uh, that Archie and Harry have, but I've been uh, met aware that Jacob is another talent. Uh, he'd be about twelve, but again. Just to go back to an earlier question, I don't like mentioning them at that age. You know, That's like twelve is very, very young. But You're not even a teenager, um, very much. Ed, Eddie, Eddie will will nurture him. You know. Uh, by the way, uh, you know that Stuart's a uh, young lad, and uh, we're all aware of um, yeah. what happened to Stuart recently. So, uh, from a personal point of view, more so my heart than my head. I hope the boy does go on and have a great yeah. career. Uh, just in Stuart's memory. Yeah, no, I can believe they've been, they've been through a lot this year at Grays and Eddie, Eddie's had a tough time. So and when Archie got, well, the goal was taken away from him. It'll always be Archie's goal for me though, but the goal against Leicester, mm. seeing Eddie in the, after the week that they'd had seen Eddie standing in the, in the, in the um, director's area with a big smile on his face was really, was really heartwarming to see and nice to see Freddie because he's, he's been through a lot this year. So hope he's okay. Hope they're all okay. Yeah. And then final question, Jerry, to wrap it up for today. We we know that we have school. We at Torp Arch is a school of excellence. Do Leeds still have academies in the local sports centres in Leeds? They still dip into the local community, or do they just rely on Torp Arch? I yeah, I think it's just Torp Arch. Um, when I was involved, we used to have centres all over Yorkshire. We had one in the school for the deaf in Doncaster, and um, and quite a number of those. What they have, they call them shadow squads. So they have scouts. And they have more or less, well, it, well, it's a shadow squad. It's more or less, you know, an under 12 shadow squad will be the reserve under 12s. And they 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 work on those as well, but they, they try and push them on the better ones into the under 12s. So he, any young boy that's in its shadow squad, his next step is to try and get into that age group, um, you know, at, at Thorpe Arch. But I just think they just focus now on, to my knowledge, uh, they focus mainly on um, on Torp Arch. I don't know mm -hmm. of any of the centres now. They don't have any in Doncaster now, and I don't think they have any in York anymore. So uh, I think it's just scouts and that, and, and maybe they have contacts in different um, in different clubs. But uh, this will help them if they pick a good young player and then send them up to um, to Leeds. But I do know they get quite a lot from the futsal uh, school in Harrogate. The guy who runs it, uh, Tim, does a great job there. And he, he keeps getting young players through from his futsal school. So that's one that's been very productive. And as I said, that's where Harry, Archie and Jacob all have come from. And young Bolt, that's that's scored in goals right, left, and centre for the 15s. Fendi Gorman came through there as well. So it's a very, very good school for development. Yeah. There's one last question, and only because of who they're asking about. And I wanted to actually get this your thought on this myself. Uh, from an Irish perspective, Jerry, uh, Steve Cantrell, sorry I'm late. Any information on Keen Coleman from Ireland? How's he doing? Uh, he's not really. I hate saying this, but I don't think Keane will be there too much longer. I just think he's he's hit his levels, and um, I hope he, he has a, another career uh, with another club, but I don't see him progressing to the first team at Leeds. The, the situation with Leeds, let's be fair and look at the whole picture. Um, it's going to be very, very hard if we get into the Premier League. We should get into the Premier League. It's in our own hands. But the the bar goes way up again. Like, let's be honest about it. Even that 
say, wherever you pick your first 11, at least half of them probably won't play in the Premier League. And we have to be yeah. honest about that. So, yeah. and unless you're really, really a special talent, you're not going to get straight into that first team. You know, you have to reach the heights of, let's be fair, Archie Gray, that level. And um, they're not there. Um, you know, as I said, the best one is Charity Crew. Uh, I hope some of the others go on and have careers at other clubs, but some will go out of the game as well. And that's just the way football is. Yeah, it's not everyone's going to make it. They need the best mm. will, and it, and that that that'll take time. And again, those who do make it, even now, mm. need time to develop and, and be patient with them. We've seen, and as fans, we can write players off very early as well. We've we've seen that over the years as well. Give these players time; they will peak at different times at different ages. We talk an awful bit. Our goalkeeper Melier gets an awful lot of stick. Yeah, twenty four year old miles off his peak, miles away from his peak yet. So, give these players time. Usually, it's rewarded, but um. Not a guarantee that everybody will make it. And but. unfortunately, football doesn't always give you time. It moves on at such an alarming pace. And uh, remember one thing, when you win the Premier League, you're competing against the best sides in Europe, in the best sides in the world. It's not just going into the Premier League in another country. It's the best football sides in the world you're up against. So you need to be a special talent. So um, that's why we have to be realistic. Any kid that does come through the academy, he deserves all the plaudits in the world because he needs to be a special, special talent and a special, uh, have a special mentality to, to, to play for Leeds in the Premier League or any club in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, but very high ceiling. It's not easy at all. Yeah. Those who make it, fair play to them. Again, I know people give footballers a stick and say, he's not great, he's not great to even get to that level. You've got to be good. You've got to be really good. So, um, best of the best make it jerry massive thank you as always for popping in having a chat it's been a fantastic discussion i really enjoyed this um it's everybody a pleasure, else uh, Ger, uh always delighted to come on board and um thanks to all the viewers who submitted uh questions i hope i answered mm -hmm. them as honestly as i could and um and it's been it's been a great experience and uh well done on your show it's one of the best shows <laughs> Um, going about and uh, long may it continue and keep up the good work and thanks again for having me anytime anytime we'll do this again Jerry around the FAU Cup final should we make it there I think we should have yeah. a, a little bit of a special round or when we win chat. promotion who yeah, yes let's do both we'll do the two of them together we'll get that done yeah uh, if I didn't get to your questions in the chat I'm really sorry just ran out of time um, and for everybody who's been commenting throughout the stream massive thanks for that and everyone who watches the channel and uh, got involved tonight again big thank you I'm back on Monday morning for some Leeds news we're into the run into the game on Friday night so we're back into real football again international break is done and we can focus on some real football for the run in uh, also there is today's news video is floating around the channel as well if you want to check that out some updates on Connor Roberts situation at Leeds Junior post contract and um, some other bits and pieces Willie Nanto been talking about last season his, Daniel Barker's influence and Pat Bamford's influence on him as well which is worth checking out so you can catch that I'm back on Monday Jerry thanks again have a great weekend a pleasure good night have a good yep. weekend everybody take care bye 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 now <sighs>